Hey guys, what is happening? Welcome back to another video in terms of career mode. And I know it's been a few days since we last uploaded this series, so I'm going to be covering a few things first. I gave you the option of a poll and deciding whether or not we should leave here at Inter Milan and go somewhere else or if we should stay. The poll actually ended up being very close, but in the end, leave actually won. But I checked through the comment section and I kind of felt like I owed it to myself as well to stay here with Inter Milan for one more season and try and win the Champions League. So, here is the plan of action. We will only be playing Champions League games. No league, no cup, nothing like that. Only the Champions League games. There was comments asking me to try and stay on and win the Champions League with Inter, maybe only playing those games in the process. That is what we're going to do. And then by the end of this season, regardless of whether or not we have won the Champions League or not, we will leave and we will go somewhere else, which is going to be the, the following thing. So, yeah, it shouldn't take us too long to get through this Champions League season because ultimately with me only playing those games and I'm not going to be playing every single one because I don't need to play every single Champions League game in order to get through the rounds, then, uh, you know, it shouldn't be too long. It should be at most, I'd say, four or five episodes until we are at the end of the season. That is, that's the plan anyway. We'll see if that actually plays out that way or not. So, like I said, plan of action is to play only Champions League games and I plan on playing half of the group stage in today's episode and uh, pretty much qualifying us through there. So you will know today whether or not we've qualified out of the group. Which it should be fairly simple for us to do. Especially considering the fact that uh, we are Europa League champions. If we don't get out of the Champions League group. I may as well kiss goodbye to the team already. So that is the first thing I've got to say. So today you will know whether or not we make it out. Also, we play the Super Copper Final and the uh, Europe something. The winners of the Champions League against the winners of the Europa League, which I actually missed out on when we were at Brighton because I left them before we could actually play that. So, uh, so although I won the Champions League, we never actually played it. Is it the Copper Europe? I don't know. Anyway, um, we'll see it in today's video. So like I said, that is what's to come. Now, with it being the transfer window, I wasn't really sure where to upgrade. We have the new additions of Deli Ali, of Lionel Messi. And also of Christian Pulisic. So going into this season, it's about where can we strengthen that actually will help us out. I picked two positions in particular. One of them being centre midfield, the other one being left back. And I'll go through right now and say, I looked at bringing in Sergei Milinkovic-Savic. Unfortunately, he couldn't afford the fee. Went back and actually remembered, I said to you guys, after I put Ruben Neves up for the poll against Paul Pogba last season... That with you guys choosing Pogba, we would sign Neves next season if he became available. So I went ahead and negotiated terms with Burnley. They wanted less than his release clause. So I was quite happy to see that. And he joins us here at Inter Milan this season. So we've got an abundance of really good central midfield talent. Which means a few are leaving the club. I will talk about those in just a few minutes. Now, on to the next one then. And I saw my left back of choice, Lucas Hernandez. Arguably the best left back in this current time in the world of football. And I'm going, of course, off of uh, my series time, which I think we are in 2022. Might be wrong. Um, and so he is pretty much, yeah, 2022. He is pretty much the best left back in the world of football at this current time, if not the one of the best. I can't remember if there's anybody else up there with him. Now, I went into that originally looking for a swap deal. I offered Bereccia. They came back and wanted £55 million on top of Bereccia. I then thought to myself, okay, so I accepted that deal, came out of it to find that he had a release clause of 51 million. So not only could I save myself an extra 4 million quid, I didn't even have to give a retro over either. So I sacked that off and went, listen, not interested in the transfer for now, we'll wait, we'll come back next week and we will just pay the release clause and get you in then. But it did mean I had to miss him for these two games against Juve and Manchester City in these two first sort of uh, big, I guess, cup games to come. Now, because... We have more games today, and because it's going to be a jam-packed episode, I didn't want to, you know, throw all the highlights in there. So I basically left the important ones, you know, the big chances, that kind of thing. And so first up, it wouldn't be Lionel Messi if he didn't pop into a new side to score the opening goal of the game after 60 minutes against Juve. Which is quite interesting, actually, because the initial shot came from another new man in Christian Pulisic. And it just fell to Messi's feet as he tapped it in, not only to get the goal, but also to win the game as well. So, uh, you know, Ronaldo came over to Juve and uh, made his mark. Now it's the turn of Messi to come to Inter and make his mark in the, uh, in the Serie A. So the first real trophy of the season, the Supercoppa Nationale, even though we largely do not care about it at this stage, is going to be ours. We beat Juve by a goal to nil. Not as convincing as it was when we first joined Inter Milan last season. 
but at least we still managed to get the victory. So I was quite happy with that one, especially seeing Frank lift it as well. When I say lift it, that's a, a term which I'm using lightly because he didn't really hoist it above the air. You can see it's kind of same position as him. I don't know what he's doing with that, but nevertheless... He gets to lift it, and we get to win it. So 1-0 against Juve was enough. Messi scoring the goal. And then it was time for this one, which, as I said, was against Manchester City. I was quite intrigued as well to see what kind of side they had. Remember, these now are the Champions League winners. City won it, and we are the Europa League winners. So... It's quite interesting to see that City are winning the Champions League, especially after we, you know, had that dominant season last season in the BPL with Brighton. Brighton didn't even go on to win the BPL or the Champions League. So they didn't do anything without us there. I know we took Frank from them, took Gordon from them. We took quite a few decent players from them, but they still have very much the same side. So I was quite surprised to see the fact they didn't really compete on any level. And I came into this and forgot that the UEFA have their own type of graphics. I've only seen this like a couple of times before when I've played... Um, in the My Player Career mode after winning the Champions League with Chelsea, I believe it was. Was it with Chelsea that I ended up then playing this in? I think it was. Um, anyway, I've seen this a couple of times, but this is the first time I've seen it in career mode, not my player. So, yeah, kind of cool graphics shown by EA, but they get very boring very quickly, as you guys know. So, in the game, all I was focused on was just pretty much playing the same football, fast-flowing, making sure the attacking intent was there, especially when you've got the likes of Pulisic, Gordson, Rafinha. You know, there's going to be so many times this season when they should be playing Barco in there as well. Deli Ali at Cam, Demir Bai, Messi. You know, we've got to fit all these players in somehow, and we simply put just won't be able to do that. So we took the lead through Gordson. I had to show you this bit here because this passing move was genuinely sensational. We played it out from the back. All the way up the other end to create a chance. Rafinha on the left-hand side. Cuts it back. Gets it towards the box. Eventually shoots with the left foot. Comes off the crossbar. Godson to finish. And he puts it wide of the post. And I was fuming because at that stage, the way we played out of our back, I was sat there genuinely drooling over that play. I was thinking, what a move that is. But then we go into the 51st minute. Martinez looking to curl one. Came back off the post. Messi's there again. Tapped one in against Juve, tapped one in against Manchester City to make it 2-0 Inter. And pretty much put us into cruise control with around about 40 or so minutes left to play. 15 to go now, though, as Deli Ali picks up the loose ball. Found Martinez. Martinez thinks it over the top. One touch. Dink the keeper. Thank you very much. See you later, Man City. You do not beat a side like ours when we are in this sort of form. What a goal that is. You're going to see it again as well, replayed, because I have to just put emphasis on so much within this move. It starts with a ball inside. It then finishes with a dink over the top towards Ali. His first touch is brilliant. Gets it down. Keeper comes, commits himself. No, you don't. No, you don't. Over the top of you, mate. See you later. There's just so much about that goal that I had to look at and go, wow. Wow, wow, wow. And a 3-0 win as well, to add to that, made me go wow even more. You can see my vocabulary. It's very, very... Uh, wide-ranging a lot of wows going on but still the second trophy secured this one feels a little bit better obviously not having won it before and uh, not winning it at Brighton as well kind of made me think to myself I should have probably played it but then I wouldn't be able to leave the club remember big thing happens when you're going to a new season on career mode if you're wanting to change you have to do it before you leave uh, before you start the new season because otherwise no teams will be available for you to browse jobs through so remember that guys which is why we never got to play this over at Brighton, but we did get to play it here and we did get to win it here quite convincingly, in fact, over Manchester City, which I rest my case. You know, if they're the Champions League winners and that was a fairly simple task for us getting through that game, winning 3-0, maybe we should be aiming to get all the way and just basically rampage our way through the Champions League. Having said that, though, the one thing we can't do is take that game as it's going to be that throughout the entire way through because, you know, taking into account, yes, City were Champions League winners, that game was a one-off. You know, we're going to have probably 20-plus games to go before we reach that final somewhere in that region. So uh, it's likely that not every game is going to be as easy as that. There's going to be games when we'll have to dig deep. There's going to be games when we'll have to just find a lucky goal in a situation where it's nil-nil right up until the last five minutes and we get a scrappy 1-0 win. That might happen, you know, so it's not going to be just as simple as us walking through every team. Going back to the point, though, Hernandez, he's here. 51 million quid, his release clause, activated it, offered him a contract. Thank you very much, mate. 100 grand a week is what he's on currently. I think we pretty much gave him 100 and... No, we gave him 81. 81 is what he wanted. I just accepted that. We gave Delhi. No, not Delhi Ali. We gave... Um... Who did we sign? Neves. We gave Neves 100k a week. That was the one. Um, but you can see, like I said, a lot of talent here, which means, unfortunately... 
that Eggerstein will be leaving. He's transfer listed, or at least we're going to try and get rid of him. But I do actually play past the transfer window in this, and I can tell you obviously who has left and who hasn't. Demir Bai was transfer listed. Uh, Tenali stays, I believe. Robinson stays. Kangin Lee stays. Uh, Batista Mier was transfer listed, and I think that's it out of the guys that I was looking at. So I kept hold of Barco, Gordson. Um, I think I even transfer listed Portu actually. Kept hold of Lee, kept hold of Robinson, kept hold of Tanali. So we've still got the youngsters here. But the main guys that we're going to fetch the pretty penny, they are all transfer listed, awaiting them to move to various different clubs. So we'll see if the offers come through. I believe, though, actually only one of them did leave. And that might have been Demir by, but I can't remember if that transfer deal did actually fall through or not. Likely it is, it probably did. Because there's that many times that it happens in this game that there's every chance it probably will have. However... We got ourselves into our group stage. And if you don't know if you just saw it there, we've been drawn in a group against Ajax, FC Basel, and Real Madrid. So I go back to my point I made previous, and you guys can quote me on this, when we end up losing a game at some stage in the near future. I said that it's going to be quite simple after we beat Man City 3-0. Well, how about that for a Champions League group slap in the face? I have been royally silenced, haven't I, by the gods who have made this group. Because this is an incredibly tough one. However, Basel, having this game away from home first, with the side that we've got, I was actually feeling very confident. And Pogba inside seven minutes does what Pogba does best and just finds the top corner with a curling effort to make it 1-0 and pretty much settle any nerves that we had coming into game. Which, to be fair, was not a lot. And uh, again, we dominated most of the play. Look at this from Ali. That right there was just... The pick of the bunch. And I had to show you. I know none of you will sit there and do it. But there are occasions online. Obviously on YouTube. As there will be people saying. Oh you use sliders. Blah 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 blah. Just for anybody that wants to try and comment that. There are the sliders as they always have been. All on default. I know you guys are generally very good at it. And uh, don't normally comment things like that. But I thought I'd just show it, show it to throw it in there anyway. And genuinely speaking. This goal right here. Really did show the quality that Ali has got. Look at this. The ball over the top. One touch. We saw him dink the goalkeeper against Man City. And a really nice goal there. I think he's just topped it. You know, when you think about a player topping their goal of the episode. Deli Ali. How about that? How about that from him? Because that was just unreal. So, 2 0 up in a game. Largely cruising. Second half got underway. Rafinha made it three. Really good work from the short corner. Again, it was just dominance. Real, real attacking dominance. A lot of sides are going to struggle to defend against us this season. But the one major issue we're going to have as well is defensively. Because we've not upgraded anybody in defence. We've only really brought in Hernandez. But I brought him in to be more of an attack-minded fullback. Rather than as a defensive fullback. Because, you know, Rudison could have easily done that job. So, he's going to kind of help down that side. But I'm more focused on the two centre-backs. We haven't brought any of those in when I said about not bringing in defenders. So... That's going to be where we kind of have to think about ourselves. And you can see Basel here did pose a little bit of a threat in the 60th minute. Trying to throw some corners into our box and cause issues. But mostly, Frank Brown knew what he was doing. And was able to pretty much sort it out and get it out of play. And a really poor pass in the end gave the ball away. And then just before we ended off the game, Godson's cross towards Barco, the substitute. And he made it four for Inter. As the first game goes in the Champions League, couldn't really ask for a better start to it, could we? No. You know, when you look at the way that we played in the Europa League last season, we were dominant. Group stages at certain times, we looked really good. Then other times looked pretty horrific. I was thinking, I don't want to repeat performance, honestly. I don't want to have another situation where we end up looking really good in the first game. Then go on to the game against Real Madrid, which is coming up in just a few moments' time, and look shoddy. So... I had to think about this and I decided that for the games that we play in the league when I'm simming through them, I'm going to be playing my full strength lineup. I'm not going to be playing a weaker side. If we end up with an injury, if we end up with something where we can't play them in the Champions League, so be it. We've got enough quality to really allow us to have to swap it about and still be a good team. You know, I'm not going to worry about the aspect of us playing league football and Champions League. That doesn't bother me in the slightest. I feel quite confident that anybody who has to come into our team now We'll be able to do a job anyway. So that's that's that part of it really down. The minute I think we're second in the league behind Juve. But like I said, not really focused on that. I'm just more about trying to keep my job before the end of the season. <laughs> Could you imagine if we're like doing bits in the Champions League. And we're like 12th and get sacked in the league. That'd be something, wouldn't it? But we got ourselves into game against Real. And this was one of the games that I was looking at to really test ourselves with. Inside two minutes. Paul Pogba's ball through to Ali. Ali in behind again. 
And he's in that sort of form. Deli Ali is tearing apart the Champions League. No more than four minutes into the game and we had the lead. It was unreal. Just got to give credit to Pogba as well, seeing the pass through, because uh, I thought at first he wasn't going to be able to find it, but he did. And I will say this as well, that driven shot was brilliantly executed. Sometimes driven shots try and be nuts, because sometimes they don't actually go where you want them to. But the game for itself largely didn't, didn't have chances. And I think that's down to obviously both sides had quality out there, which made it tough to create the opportunities. We took the first one through Ali. Then we put the ball in the back of the net with Rafinha with 12 minutes to go. But the ref blew for a penalty, which fair enough it was. But we actually put the ball in the net. So could he have played advantage to see where that was going to go? I don't know if you saw that as well. Coziello was just substituted a moment ago. One of our former players, of course. But it wouldn't be a game against Real Madrid if Messi didn't score. I had to give him the spot kick. And I apologise to any Real Madrid fans out there. And we're going to be looking at this video now going, DJ, I can't believe he just did that. Well, I had to, guys. It's Messi against Real Madrid. Just had to keep up with it, didn't I? 2 no win in the end. The game, like I said, didn't have a lot of moments where I thought, geez, we're tearing them apart like we did in the previous games. But that could have been just down to us having a bit of an off day, maybe. Like I said, you know, in the, in the previous segment when I talked about the Europa League, I was having off days certain times. Could have been that there. You know, that, that might not be as bad as I thought. So there we go then. Torino in the league. Pfft, irrelevant. Like, none of the league games matter to me at this stage. I mean, I'm still going to show you them so you can see what goes on at least. So you know who's scoring goals, who's doing what. And I suppose if you really wanted me to, I could actually play like the big games like Juve... Maybe. Um, I'm not sure if I will, though, because like I said, I want to get through this as quickly as I can towards the Champions League so that we can move on. Because this is part of my, like, enjoyment as well. You know, the side we've got, it's just so damn good. We'd win the league easy if I was playing every game, even on all my difficulty. And touching slider settings in terms of this game can be quite tough. I'm trying to do it on the road to glory, and I haven't found a slider setting that I'm getting comfortable with to the point where it's just hard enough, but not too difficult and not too easy at the same time. So... Yeah, I'm pretty much sticking with uh, the ultimate difficulty and hoping that I'm still going to have a bit of a problem, which is why wherever we go next, I'm going to be selling pretty much the entire starting 11 and building a team from scratch. Just so you guys know. I said it last episode and I'll say it again, just so you guys know what happens whenever we go somewhere else. Following the Real Madrid game though, we faced Ajax, the last side in our group stage for the first time. And Deli Ali again continued the form of the episode to give us the lead after 16 minutes. The guy is unbelievable. Kind of glad that I stayed now just so I could use him a little bit because I've never actually used him in career mode unless it was for England. I've never kind of signed him for an actual team. So it's kind of cool to actually be able to use him for once in career mode, which is something that I don't get to, uh, the chance to do often. I like that with Pogba actually as well. Don't really use Pogba that much and I should be using him more because look at that for a strike. And that is one of the first times, guys, I have been able to time an actual driven shot, not a low driven, just an actual driven one, and actually score. All the time, I end up smashing it with a load of power, and I either do it too early or too late, it goes over the bar, or it's basically trickling across the floor and goes out of play. That is the first time I've been able to do it, and you don't even understand how buzzing I was after that. What I will say is, don't be expecting it again, because I am horrific at them. But Deli Ali again, as if it would be, two goals for him in the game, 3-0 into Milan against Ajax, we were tearing them apart as well. Back to our good sort of standing. I mean, when you've got Ali, who's just banging him in for fun, like, do I even need to do anything? Or should I just let Dali Ali do it all? Dali Ali? Dali Ali? That's not his name. Dali Ali is his name. Should I just let Dali Ali do it all? Because he seems to just be that able in terms of the way he plays. Like, I don't even have to do much. Just let Dali Ali take over. The Dali Ali effect, we'll call it. How about that? But, the end of the game spanned itself. Nine points from a possible nine having beaten every single team put in our way in the first games of the group stage. Following this, remember though, guys, we do face them all again. And I actually simmed the next game against Ajax at home, which you're about to see in a few minutes, and we smash them, guys. Which means we top the group, and not only that, we're already through. So going into next episode, chances are we will not be playing every single Champions League game in the group stage. I might play the next one against Real Madrid just so we get first seed. Have not yet decided. So I guess I could do that in the meantime. And then following that, we'll move into the knockout rounds. And I'll play as much as I can, given the time that I've got in the knockout rounds to see how far we can get. So it could even be next episode. We'll be getting to like the quarters or the semi-final stages. We'll see in due course. But that's confirmation we've qualified. Haven't conceded a goal yet in the group stage either. 
5-0 win against uh, Ajax just there moments ago. Really did bits. And I understand as well, I know you guys want me to leave and go somewhere else. That is coming, guys. Do not worry. I just wanted one shot with Inter Milan at the Champions League. If you have enjoyed today's episode, though, guys, thank you so much for watching it. As always, thank you all for your continued support on the channel as well. Really appreciate that. If you are new around here and like what you see, hit that subscribe button down below. Follow me on the channel. We upload every single day at 4 p.m. UK time, so don't miss any videos. And until next time, guys, enjoy the rest of your day. Adios.